In the two previous videos, I have just explained how to construct and work with lists of data in C Sharp, and I have also explained how to construct and how to work with arrays of data as well in C Sharp. And I have mentioned here and then that they're very different in how they work internally, and there are certain situations where we would want to use some or the other. Okay, so I'm going to use this diagram that I found on Stack Overflow here on this uh, link here. You're welcome to check it out. Actually, um, and then I'm using for it was one. It was a very good response about this difference, and um, and this is the, the slide that I use for my introduction to computational design class. The idea is that um, is that lists are a structure that is very flexible, very flexible. Uh, because uh, when it is stored in memory, the idea is that each one of the data points that you have on the list, each one of the numbers or the strings or whatever type you're storing there, is stored somewhere in memory. Okay, And that somewhere in memory might be anywhere in your whole computer memory. It doesn't matter. They don't have to be contiguous one after the other. And how lists know which elements go after the other is that when the computer saves one element, adds one element to the list, when it adds the second one, what it does is it goes to the previous one, and it saves also on the previous element, it saves the memory address of where the next element of that list is to be found. So that what that means is that internally, a list has in memory for each one of the elements, it has the information for that element, and it has an address, a memory pointer that points to the next element that is on that list, and so on and so on. So each one of the elements can be anywhere in memory because it knows where the next element is going to be, and it can point the computer to that location. That is how lists are stored in memory, but the way arrays are stored in memory is different because what the computer does is that, OK, you're telling me that you want 10 elements. And those elements are going to be integers. So I know that uh, I'm going to store those integers as 32 bits. So I know that 32 bits sometimes I need 320 bits of free memory contiguous in the same block uh, to store this array. So the computer looks at the memory, finds a large spot of memory, and saves that whole thing for your array. Uh, that is the reason why we need to declare first, we need to declare the type of what we're going to save so that the computer knows each one of those boxes, how much memory it needs. And also we need to define uh, beforehand how many elements the array is going to contain so that it can find 10 uh, blocks contiguous in memory. Uh, the advantage of that is that Arrays are really, really performative. They're very fast to read and very fast to write. Because since all the information is in memory next to each other, then when you say, for example, um, can you give me the fifth element of an array, the computer knows where the first element is, is because it's somewhere in memory, and it knows that each element is 32 bits. So it knows how to, it knows to move right away to uh, element uh, bit 160, and it knows that the fifth element is going to be right there. And for 10 elements, that might be blazing fast. Uh, but for a million elements, if you have an array of elements, that actually matters a lot. And that is what call that is what called random access memory. Um, is the idea that by knowing the size of the elements and the location, you can very easily go to that position and read that element very fast. Whereas with lists, it doesn't really work that way because since El the elements of a list can be anywhere in memory. It turns out that theoretically, the way to find the fifth element of a list is by starting with the first one, going to the memory, finding the memory for the second one, and the second one reading the memory address of the third one, then going to the fourth one, and going to the fifth one until you find the one that you want. And again, for five elements, this might be really fast, but for a million elements, in order to get the last one, you kind of would have to go through the one million before, which will take some time, right? Um, at the same time, lists, so lists are a little slower when it comes to retrieving and accessing information, all right? Even though C Sharp actually uh, comes up with a lot of optimizations and tricks to make this process not so heavy, okay? 
So, but we don't really need to get into that. Um, and so that is one of the disadvantages of lists. The other disadvantage is that for storing the same amount of data, lists need more memory because not only do they need to store the same amount of data, so they have the same memory footprint, but they need more memory to store the memory pointers from each element to the next one. So the memory demands of lists are much larger. So, well, if that's the case, then <clears throat> why would we want to use lists? Why would we want to use lists and not uh, always stick to arrays that are so fast and so performative? Well, first of all, there will be a lot of situations where we actually don't know how many elements we're going to be working with. Okay, so if I, if I load uh, external data or if I'm changing things as inputs are coming, emails are coming, whatever, storing email, an email database, say emails are coming, so I need to keep storing them somewhere, right? So if there's uncertainty about the number of elements, then lists are a bit better in that sense. Also, when because arrays are a full block of data, one next to each other, then you can't really decide to take the third element of the array. That doesn't work. What you would need to do is you would need to say, okay, what I'm going to do in order to remove this element is to actually take all the elements afterwards and then start copying them and moving them one position before, which is actually a kind of expensive operation. And even, the, even so, you would need always end up with the last element being zero or whatever. You can't really remove that. In order to truly change the size of an array, what you actually need to do, say I wanted to remove the first two elements of this array. What the computer actually does is that it finds a new spot in memory that can store eight elements and then it blocks that spot and then it copies one after the other, the other eight elements that are remaining from that operation. So changing the size of an array is actually a very expensive operation because you have to literally copy the whole array into a new memory location. Whereas with linked lists, changing and removing elements is actually quite, quite simple. Because if you want to add a new element to the list, the only thing you need to do is like find somewhere in memory where uh, you have you can store that one element and then go to the last element of the list and there store a memory pointer that points to where I just added that element in memory. The computer C sharp takes care of doing that automatically for us. We don't need to maintain that. And also removing an element is also super cheap because the only thing that I need to do is say I want to remove this guy from the list. The only thing that I need to do is go to the previous element and then Whatever the memory address here is pointing to this element, now don't do that and overwrite that with a memory pointer that is pointing to this one. So take this arrow and instead of pointing here, just point to this one. And therefore this element is forgotten and is not part of the list anymore. So it's a very simple operation. So long story short, <clears throat> when you know a priori, when you know beforehand how many elements you're going to be working with, and those elements are not going to change, but the size of that elements are not going to change, then arrays are probably the best choice that you want. However, if you have a certain level of uncertainty, if you don't know how many elements you're going to be working with, if you need to add elements to your list, if you need to remove, if you need to change the size of your list very often, then lists are definitely the structure that you want to choose uh, for that operation. Arrays, changing the size of arrays is a very, very expensive operation to do, okay? So these are kind of the two options and the main differences. Uh, many programming languages have versions of arrays and linked lists. Uh, and in C Sharp, we just saw literally arrays and lists, and these are the disadvantages and the advantages of using one or the other, okay? I hope that was clear. Um, and let's move on to the next video uh, and see what other things we can do with arrays and with lists.